welcome friends for lecture number 4 on the chapter number 6 combustion in cyan in previous third lecture we discussed the combustion chambers considerations used in cyan also we discussed the swirling motion why the swirling motion is important in cyan and accordingly we discussed the different types of the swirling motion motion that is to be used in the cyan in that we discussed the induction swirl how induction swirl is achieved what are the advantages what are the disadvantages next that is the compression swirl what is a compression swirl how compression swirl is achieved again the advantages and disadvantages and lastly the combustion induction induced swirl how it is to be achieved what are the different advantages and disadvantages same time the last we discuss the different statement about how to justify this statement for example the requirement of air motion and swirl in cyan chamber is much more compared to the si we are also discuss on this statement why the swirling motion and air motion in cyan engine is much more why it is to be needed in case of cyan engine compared to the si and accordingly we also justify the same statement also we discuss on the statement that justify the statement that why induction swirl in cyan engine helps to increase the indicated thermal efficiency also we are discuss on this statement now today we will discuss the different types of the combustion chambers used yeah. in the correct we are discuss the different types of the combustion chambers in the cyan engines and uh, accordingly also here we discuss first the difference between the induction swirl and compression swirl that already we have discussed in previously <clears throat> so first we will discuss the induction swirl advantages in induction swirl first advantage is high excess air high excess air therefore indicated thermal efficiency is high in compression swirl less excess air therefore lower indicated thermal efficiency means in induction swirl heat loss is less in this case heat loss is a more second advantage due to low intensity of swirl easier for starting it is easier for starting it is a cold starting trouble cold starting problem is going to be achieved due to the high heat loss when the air is to be moved from main chamber to the additional or divided chamber then third advantage in induction swirl no additional work for producing swirl there is no any additional work is to be required to get the swirling motion to get the induction swirl and that's why high mechanical efficiency as well as the high break thermal efficiency here work absorbed in producing compression swirl means some energy is to be lost to produce the compression swirl because of that the mechanical efficiency is lower in turn the break thermal efficiency also lower advantage again used with low speed therefore low quality of fuel can be used here cylinder more expensive in construction means design on the this divided combustion chamber is expensive one construction is very that is a it is a very precise construction that is to be needed and that's why the cost is more disadvantage weak swirl multi orifice nozzle required high injection pressure required correct closing of holes high maintenance here single injector pintle pintox you can use also less maintenance influences minimum quantity of fuel complications at high loads and idling large valves higher volumetric efficiency in induction swirl shrouded valves smaller valves masking of valves lowers the volumetric efficiency here greater utilization of that air due to st strong swirl meaning then weak swirl low air utilization lower mean effective pressure large size engine correct right. swirl proportional to speed so suitable for variable speed operation swirl not proportional to the speed 
efficiency not maintained in variable speed engine smooth engine operation so likewise one can uh, differentiate between the induction swirl and compression swirl so this point is also may be asked in the examination meaning the differentiate between the induction swirl and now compression now start the types of the combustion chambers so as we know that the most important function of ci engine combustion chamber is to provide the better mixing of fuel and air in very short time in very short period so in order to achieve this and organize the air movement that is known as the swirl is provided to produce the high relative velocity between the fuel droplets and the air meaning so to getting the better mixing of air and fuel in short time we need some ordered air motion this ordered air motion is one of the swirl motion so that it will produce the relative velocity between the fuel droplets and air so when the liquid fuel is to be injected into combustion chamber the spray cone gets distributed due to air motion and turbulence inside the engine cylinder so the onset of the combustion will cause an added turbulence that can be guided by the shape of the combustion chamber so one also combustion once started then also it going to add the ordered motion or disordered movement of this combustible products inside the combustion chamber getting so ci engine combustion chambers are classified into two categories one open injection type means direct injection type and second indirect injection type means idi types meaning so di type and idi type open injection and indirect injection so in open injection this type of combustion chamber is also called see means di type is also called as open combustion chamber so in this type the entire volume of combustion chamber is located in main cylinder getting so entire volume of combustion chamber is located in a main combustion chamber and fuel is injected in this volume in this volume which is in the main engine cylinder whereas indirect injection type that is idi type the combustion space is divided in two parts <clears throat> getting it is divided in two parts one part that is a main in main cylinder and other part in the cylinder head getting one part in the main cylinder and other in a cylinder head and that's why the construction is a very very precise and that's why it is a expensive one and the fuel injection is effected usually into the part of the chamber located in the cylinder head is partly the fuel is to be injected in this additional or divided that chamber which is located in the cylinder head getting so again this indirect injection type again divided into different types that is having again classified into the different types namely swirl chamber then peak combustion chamber and air so we will discuss thoroughly discuss about first open combustion chamber that is a direct injection chambers getting direct injection chambers or open combustion chamber so an open combustion chamber is defined as one in which the combustion space is essentially a single cavity with little restriction from one part of the chamber to other and hence with no large difference in pressure between the parts of the chamber during the combustion process so it is nothing but a cavity it is nothing but a cavity means it is nothing but a space provided in a main combustion chamber so such a cavity is provided in the piston if you see at the piston crown at the top of the piston such cavities are to be provided of different shapes getting of different shapes and that's why the fuel is to be injected over this entire volume and that's why in open combustion chamber the whole combustion chamber is located the volume of whole combustion chamber is located in the main that is the engine cylinder getting so in four stroke engines with open combustion chambers induction swirl is obtained either by careful formation of the 
air intake passages or by masking or by shrouding or by other ways by giving the proper shape at the passages at the inlet passages, passages we get the induction swirl in open combustion chambers so these chambers mainly consist of space formed between the flat cylinder head so cylinder head is a flat in open chamber cylinder head is a flat and cavity is provided in piston crown so various types of shapes are provided in the piston crown top of the piston likewise here there are less cavities provided here the more cavities provided depth is more here depth is a less meaning and the fuel is injected directly into this space and the injection nozzles used for these chambers are generally multifold type are generally multifold type working at relatively higher pressures around 200 so for open combustion chambers we require the multifold fuel injectors or fuel nozzles meaning so main advantage of these chambers are minimum heat loss getting minimum heat loss heat loss is a minimum because lower surface area to volume ratio hence better efficiency surface to volume ratio is a lower that's why efficiency is more and the heat loss is also less no cold starting problems as heat loss is a less means there is no any problem arises due to the cold starting then high atomization because of multifold nozzles as injector use that is a multifold and which which are going to inject the fuel at very high pressure relatively high pressure okay, around 200 bar that's why in this case what happens the atomization is a very good high atomization is a possible drawbacks high fuel injection pressure that is to be needed hence complex design of fuel injection pump as in this case we require the high injection pressure around 200 bar that's why the what are the design used for the fuel injection pump is a complex then necessity of accurate metering of fuel by injection system for small engines and okay, so again the fuel injection system is plays important role in open combustion chambers So now these open combustion chambers are divided in different types, namely shallow depth, hemispherical, cylindrical, and toroidal chambers. So first we will discuss the shallow depth chamber. Now how we are going to differentiate again with the cavity provided in the piston crown. Getting the shape of that piston, shape of this cavity provided in the piston crown. Accordingly, there are different types are there. So first shallow depth. chamber so in shallow depth chamber the depth of the cavity provided in piston is quite small so you see here the depth provided in a piston crown is a small depth meaning cavity that is a small one and this chamber is usually adapted for large engines generally this is used for the large engines running at low speed obviously large engines running at low speed since the cavity diameter is large the diameter is a large so squish available is a negligible so squish that is a motion available in the combustion chamber that is a less that is air motion this is known as a squish that is a less getting due to this volume to surface to volume ratio again the depth to diameter of cylindrical chamber can be varied to give any desired squish to give the better performance if we are going to give the more depth according to the diameter what happens we are getting the different that squish we are getting a different air motions in this shallow depth chamber for better performance then hemispherical so the chamber to give better performance so in hemispherical if you see here again in hemispherical the depth of cavity is a more cavity depth is a more more cavity depth is to be provided so this chamber also give the better or small squish and again the diameter 
diameter to depth ratio that is plays important role getting however so depth diameter ratio of this cylindrical chamber can be varied you can vary to get the desired squish here to get the desired squish so again hemispherical shape is provided in the cavity that's why it is known as a hemispherical cylindrical chamber so the this design is attempted in the cell diesel engines again the shape cavity of shape is a cylindrical one in the cavity and this modification of cylindrical chamber in the form of truncated cone it is a truncated cone what a truncated cone with the base angle 30 degrees you correct this two sides of this truncated cone the angle is a 30 degrees so the swirl was produced by masking so whenever the air is to be induced to the chamber to the intake passages to the intake wall by that way the masking is provided for the wall and by that way we get the the swirling motion okay so squish can be also varied by varying the depth the depth is to be varied again the squish motion or air meshing is to be varied then next toroidal chamber that is a toroidal chamber so the idea behind this shape is to provide a powerful squish to see such a toroidal shape is provided because of that what happens whatever the air flow mixture that is to be in this passages in this cavity it gets compressed and ejected instantaneous when the piston reaches to the compression it reaches to the tdc in a compression stroke and this ejected air fuel motion air fuel mixture is produces the squish motion or air motion provide the swirl motion to the inside the combustion chamber so it provides a powerful squish getting so again the one can also increase the, again this this swirl motion by proper masking at the inlet inlet passages or inlet wall so again the spray cone angle is 150 degree to 160 degree multi hole again the multi hole injectors have to be used Filling. So in all open combustion chambers, we are going to use the multi-hole multi-hole fuel injectors because we have need the high induction pressures. It is possible with only the multi-fuel injectors. Filling. So these are the four types of the cylindrical chambers used in the open combustion chamber. Now we will discuss the indirect induction chambers. So what is the indirect chambers? a divided combustion chamber is defined as in that means divided combustion chamber is defined as one in which the combustion space is divided in two or more distinct compartments meaning it is to be in two or more compartments as in open combustion chamber main combustion chamber means entire that combustion chamber is located in the is in engine cylinder itself but in indirect or divided combustion chamber the combustion space is divided in compartments two or more compartments and this creates the considerable pressure difference between them between this divided combustion chambers between the combustion process so accordingly there are three types we have to discuss first we will discuss the ricardo swirl chamber So we will discuss the record of swirl chamber. So here it is figure is to be shown. So this spherical shaped swirl chamber. So this additional chamber is provided in the cylinder head. Getting and this additional chamber is connected with the main chamber. Here main chamber is there. It is connected with the main chamber through these restricted passages known as a throat. Known as a throat. So swirl chamber consists of a spherical shape chamber separated from engine cylinder so it is separated this swirl chamber is separated from the engine cylinder and located in the cylinder head so into this chamber about 50% of air is transferred during the compression stroke 50% of air which is in the main engine cylinder is forced into this chamber it is compressed it's transferred from main chamber main combustion space or main combustion chamber to the his additional chamber 
through this throat so throat connects the chamber to the cylinder which enters the chamber in tangential direction so that the air coming into this chamber is given a strong rotary movement inside the swirl so this restricted passage is provided this throat so when the air compressed the air from main chamber is to be enter into this swirl chamber getting in a tangential direction so air coming into this chamber is having the rotary motion strong rotary movement inside the swirl chamber getting in this way it was the swirling motion that is known as the compression swirl getting compression swirl and after the combustion the products means when combustion begins in this additional chamber or in this swirl chamber the products rush back into the engine's main engine cylinder through the same throat at much higher velocity getting because the restricted passage is there as especially restricted so once combustion is started in this swirl chamber so what are the products of combustion they are again rush back into the main chamber getting through this throat at much higher velocity so this causes the considerable heat loss so during this what happens first when highly compressed air is moving from main chamber to the swirl chamber heat loss is there so proper insulation is to be provided same time when the combustible products that they are going to be rushed back from swirl chamber to the main chamber there is a heat loss in the passage between the additional chamber and this main chamber so this type of combustible chamber finds the application where fuel quality is difficult to control where reliability under the adverse condition is important then the fuel economy meaning means any type of fuel cheap quality of fuel you can use for this swirl chamber so it uses the single hole meaning single hole fuel nozzle or single hole injector is to be used in this case meaning so this is about the record was swirl chamber meaning next part we will discuss in the next thing